the idea for this episode started with Paul, I believe, if, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Paul. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking for something else to do, and uh, this, we, had, we had flirted with the idea of Justice League for a long time. You were not hot on the idea, but... As soon as I knew how much work it was going to be. Yes. And it did turn out to be a lot of work, but it turned out to be a good show, too. How did we come up with the lineup for this show, for, for which characters were actually going to be in it? I mean, I know that we there was some kind of problem we couldn't use Wonder Woman or something right. at that time, so that's why we substituted Big Barda for Barda. her. She was also in the comic book at that time, and I th oh, that's think right. she was a bad addition. Yeah, yeah. No, I like Barda. I, yeah. I thought oh, you, know, you know, me, any, throwing any kind of nod to Kirby, I can. Sure. You know, she, again, you know, a woman who's theoretically immortal, she's been around for a long time, strong and powerful. She, you know, worked well in, in that role. And then uh, we needed a Green Lantern, so I thought, well, as the ring gets passed down, you know, time and time again, why not a kid Green Lantern? Was that your idea to come up with a little Asian kid the Green little, Lantern? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like him. Yeah, I Lama think Warhawk is actually better than the Hawkman, so I don't know if that was act was Warhawk an ever a comic? Or? No, no, no. Again, no, we created I, him for the show. I wanted to do a Hawkman type character, <laughs> then I thought, you know, it's futuristic, so let's give him like metallic wings and a more, you know, hard edged look. So. Mm -hmm. Aqua Girl, you know that was easy. I just imagined, what if Aquaman and Mira had a had a daughter at some mm -hmm. point? At some point, Micron was a nod to the Atom. Mm -hmm. So there were all kind of archetypes of, uh, you know, of uh, characters that had been before. One of the things that kind of bugged me for a long time about the episode, and I've I've kind of gotten over it after <laughs> after all these years, but one of the things that bugged me about it was that uh, before the, the Justice League concept came up. We had talked from, I think, from day one about doing an episode with Superman in the Batman Beyond world. Mm -hmm. And we threw out a bunch of different ideas about what we should do with the Batman Beyond Superman crossover and the Superman Beyond crossover. And we never really came up with anything that, like, that, like, just really sang immediately that was, that was good enough that we could actually go forward with it and turn it into a show. Um, so... You know, when, when I got the outline for The Call Part 1, first of all, I was reluctant to do the Justice League anyways. But B, I was also kind of miffed that it was just another story where, you know, Superman turned out to be the bad guy. And that was what the last episode of Superman was, you know, right. the legacy. So it was kind of like, ah, the last time we saw Superman, he was the bad guy and he was brainwashed. And here we're kind of doing the same thing. So that kind of bugged me. But like I said, over the course of time now, I look back on it and it's, it's all okay. But, um, but we definitely wanted to do something with... Superman in sure. that world. I remember the, the very first thing when I got the script was just thinking how cool it was to after all these years get to actually say Superman and have him come up and, uh -huh. and you know have a scene with somebody that you know it was it was very cool for me to, to you know have have Terry be brought into the Justice League. I thought that was kind of a great way to, to end the show. Shall we cut through the chit chat? I know it wasn't ink that brought you to Gotham. I think it's time your protege joined the Justice League. The Justice League? It, it was one of those things where every, it, all the voices together, especially in the room, just seemed to work so well. And, mm -hmm. and the second that anybody, Peter or, or Chris or anybody, opened their mouth, they just kind of were that character, which I thought was really neat. My beak tells me this stinks. I'm afraid Barda and Warhawk have a point. No offense. As for why we used Chris and not Tim, I don't really know why we did that, because Tim Daly, as people know, played Superman for us. But um, I, don't, I think we just felt that... that Chris, his voice has much more of a gravelly edge. This isn't up for discussion. Like it or not, Batman stays. I think it was just a natural idea to, to cast the guy who played his dad right. as him. Mm -hmm. So it's like when he got older, he kind of turned into his dad. Yeah. So I think it worked really well. Oh, and, yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, I, I remember the scene between uh, the, the, the first time that Superman comes back into the Batcave and, and sees uh, Bruce again mm -hmm. sitting at the console. And I just remember uh, Kevin and Chris together uh, having that one scene, and I just thought that scene was brilliant because I remember I think it his, his first line he says, uh, "How are you holding up?" And, right. and Kevin says, "With a cane." And it was just, <laughs> yeah. just this perfect line and that deep booming voice, and I yeah. just thought that scene between the two of them I yeah. thought was was fantastic. Yeah, yeah that the antagonism between the two characters is, only gets worse as time goes by. <laughs> Grumpy old Superman. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, uh, I know we've kind of harped on this a lot in the in, in the commentaries as I've been watching them back. I go, "Yeah, we do say that a lot," but you know the thing is, this show again was the first time we'd done a, a, a group superhero you know, show of this scale. And some of the action sequences in this show are just really off the hook in terms of um, how big they are and how much, how much yeah. you know, pencil mileage goes into them. Um, it was something that was really new for us. I mean, it was just trying to balance an action scene with, with five different characters in motion all at the same time. It was really, really a struggle. And uh, it turned out to be actually good practice for when we did do Justice League. It, right. We, mm -hmm. we actually, when we started Justice League, we actually sat down with the call and the storyboard <laughs> crew and we watched the call and we said, okay, this is an example of what not to do. 
Don't pan <laughs> away from this scene to that scene just to show what everybody's doing all at the same time. Use a cut instead because the pan will slow you down. No, seriously, it was a good trial run. Um, but some of these action sequences, are, are, for the time, they were like some of the, the craziest stuff that we'd ever done. That whole sequence at the end when Metropolis is getting destroyed. Yeah. Um, Adam Van Wyck was a storyboard artist for that. Yeah. Um, that's just some of the, the craziest stuff that we'd ever done up until that point. And it, it still holds up. I mean, it's a, it's a real shocking, cool sequence. More so the first part one than part two, though. I mean, most of part two takes place. Yeah, in... part two is less is less spectacular, less spectacle. more story driven. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. But it's still it's got. I mean, again, thanks to Adam Van Wyck, it's got that sequence where all the zillions of starfish attack yeah. Terry and stuff. I mean, that's that's a lot of pencil mileage right there. But but yeah, it doesn't have the, the quite the epic scope that part one, part one does. But part one's got all those all that great stuff with like the buildings blown up. Oh and, yeah. yeah. And the bit where Warhawk gets destroyed and the. His helmet smacks into the bat Batmobile window. That was window. cool like with the Batmobile awesome. window, yeah. Even though his death is a total cheat, it totally doesn't work. But um, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. The whole the whole episode doesn't really make sense if you look at it too closely. I mean, there's there's all kinds of logic flaws built into it, but it's just like ah, whatever. It's fun. Let it go.